So far in this mini-series on indicators, we've looked at three ways of determining whether the market regime is trending. We first looked at the Arun indicator and then more recently have considered the use of a single moving average and also a dual moving average approach. Today, we look at our fourth and final option, which is to use a three moving average approach. This triple moving average was originally devised specifically to provide a third classification of market regime in addition to that of an uptrend and a downtrend. It's a classification where there's not a strong trend in either direction. So that might be indicative of a trading range or potentially just a change in the trend direction. And so this approach provides another more flexible way of us then informing the rules that we're using in our algorithmic trading systems. And we'll finish up today by looking at the results of all four approaches to determine which is the most useful. Stay tuned. If we can reliably categorize the market regime, the value of that cannot be underestimated, which is why it's worth looking at multiple ways of undertaking that process and putting the effort into the research required. And so far, we've looked at the single moving average approach, a dual moving average approach, and also one that used an oscillator called the Arun indicator to do the same job. In this episode, we continue that theme by looking at a triple moving average technique. And this allows us to classify the market either into an uptrend, a downtrend, or a non-trending mode. So let's take a closer look. So the three moving averages that I'm using here are 50 periods, which is the red line, 100 periods, which is the green, and 200, which is the blue. Now, the principle of the rule behind this indicator is if those three moving averages are in order, so for example, with the fastest moving average, the red one, underneath the next fastest, which is green, underneath the slowest, which is blue, then that is indicative of a downtrend. When that order is reversed, so we have the fastest on top and the slowest underneath, that's indicative of an uptrend. And whenever they're in the wrong order, that means the market can't be classified. So if you look at this area in the middle here, where the red indicator lies between the green and the blue, then the third non-trending category is applied. So just like we did before, let's look at the result of this. So here we can see there are two parts of the chart with that third classification. Now, clearly you might look at this and say with a different number of periods that this could be improved on further. And of course, that's the case. And that's something that you should try out for yourself both visually on charts, but also as part of systematic backtesting so that you can determine which categorizations suit your purposes best. What I want to do now is compare all four of the previous techniques we've used and look at them side by side. So top left, we see the single moving average version. And as we said before, one of the characteristics of this is that it does really struggle when we are in a trading range and the categorization seems to continually flip from one to the other. Now, this could be improved by using a slower moving average. But the thing you have to remember with moving averages is that they're lagging indicators. And the higher the number of periods that you use, the slower the indicator is to react to changing market dynamics. So let's look at a quick example of that. If we look here where the categorization changes from green to red, you'll notice that the red categorization happens after the downtrend actually started. And that's because of this inherent lag in this type of indicator. 
So although a longer number of periods would stop this switching back and forth over here, it does also have this downside that you need to consider. Now moving over to top right where we looked at the dual moving average, here it's much more stable in the predictions that it's making. And in many respects is similar to the triple moving average which is bottom left. The difference here is that we have this additional categorization that we enter when the market is either in a trading range or potentially when it's moving from a downtrend to an uptrend or vice versa. And then bottom right we have the interpretation from the Arun indicator. But remember there were a couple more subcategories here. One where we use this advanced technique for the dual moving average and also the alternative interpretation of the Arun indicator. So all in all we've actually covered six different mechanisms of undertaking this task. Now we've almost come to the end of this indicators mini-series and we just have a couple more episodes and in the next we're going to look at how to bring together a lot of what we've learned in terms of oscillators and trend following indicators to combine them into a trading system and we'll be looking in some detail at the pros and cons of each of those types of indicators and therefore consider how to put each of them to best use. Now please do remember to give me a like if you've got value from today and if you're not already familiar with Darwin X you can click on the link at the bottom here to find out more information about what we do. So now until next time, trade safe.